Good morning, and welcome to worship at St. James Lutheran Church. We're happy to have you joining us today. A couple of announcements to note as we get started this morning. Tuesday will be our blood drive here at St. James from 12 to 5. You can call Diane Francis or let her know if you'd like to sign up for that. Again, that's on Tuesday. Next Sunday, we will be having drive-through communion again. That will be from 2 to 3. We ask you to please wear masks and join us for drive-through communion next Sunday. And a newsletter will be coming out this week, so keep an eye out for that with some important information about a virtual Bible school coming up in August. And now let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. We've gathered together in the presence of God. We offer our praise and our prayers. We come before God with confidence. We offer our praise and our prayers. Even when we can't find the words, we offer our praise and our prayers. God's own Spirit is here with us, praying in us and for us, giving shape to our wordless hopes and longings, and pleading for us before the throne of grace. So let us come with joy to offer our worship to God, who knows and loves us all. We offer our praise and our prayers. Our first song is Good, Good Father. Yeah. 
When we don't know how or what to pray, the Spirit knows. When all we can muster are sighs and groans, the Spirit knows those also. When we feel that we aren't even worthy to approach God, the Spirit goes before us and with us, and God welcomes us with open arms. Let us confess our sins together, saying, Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us and in your spirit lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Sisters and brothers, if God did not spare his own son, but freely gave him up for all of us, will he not also give us everything else? So who will bring any charge against us? No one, for it is God who justifies. Who will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us and is sitting at God's right hand pleading for us. So be at peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom, that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hello, it's time for the children's sermon, and today I want to talk about yeast. Do you know what yeast is? Well, it's an ingredient that we use in baking bread and making all sorts of other things, and bread becomes lighter and fluffier because of yeast. Yeast is the ingredient that we use to make bread rise and get bigger than it would be otherwise. Now, what's interesting about yeast is that yeast is actually alive. I'm not talking it's alive, it used to be alive like the other ingredients in bread. Yeast is actually still alive when you're making the bread, which means that it's made up of tiny little creatures that love nothing more than to eat sugar and to blow bubbles. And the bubbles that they blow are what makes the bread get bigger and fluffier and taste the way bread's supposed to taste. Now, in the ancient days, before uh, you could buy things like a packet of yeast in the store, people would save the dough from a previous batch. When they were making bread, they would set aside just a little bit that they wouldn't bake to keep the yeast alive. And the next time they made some bread, they would take that little bit of dough and they would mix it in with all the other ingredients. And the little bit of dough, the yeast that was in that, would spread and grow to make all the dough rise and it would all become the way it's supposed to be and taste really good. And in that way, yeast could be used over and over again, sometimes for years, just from a tiny little batch of things so small you can't even see them. So Jesus said that the kingdom of God is a little bit like that. The kingdom of God is a little bit like yeast spreading through bread and a batch of yeast spreading through more and more dough than you could possibly expect. Because Jesus knew 
that the word of God is also alive. And the word of God, when we share it with other people, doesn't get taken away from us. No, when we share God's word, when we share God's wisdom or God's comfort or God's forgiveness or God's blessing, it doesn't take away the things that we have. It bubbles up in other people so that they can receive what God wants to give them too. And then God's word is shared by those people to other people and it just grows and grows so that God's blessing, God's mercy, God's love, God's wisdom can be shared not just with a few people, but with the whole world. And God's kingdom keeps growing just like that. So if you ever wonder if you are too small or too insignificant to do anything that matters, I want you to remember yeast. Because this creature that is so small you can't even see it can change the flavor and the texture of bread for years and years to come. And you with the things you care about, the things you talk about, the things you do, you can make a difference too. Because when the word of God is alive in you, God can do miracles through you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of bread, for the gift of yeast, and for the gift of your kingdom come among us. Enliven us with your word so that your life can bubble up wherever we encounter. And may your kingdom come among us and among the whole world. We ask all this through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. lesson is from 1 Kings chapter 3. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you, and you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to them, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 8. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. For those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, in order that He might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom He predestined, He also called. And those whom He called, He also justified. And those whom He justified, He also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until it was all leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught a fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You know what I'm saying? 
Sometimes you just have to sigh. Ah. When I was a teenager, my mother told me that I was an expert at sighing. Well, sighing and rolling my eyes, really. Because when I was 13, I was often frustrated, overwhelmed, and my sigh was my way of expressing that frustration when I just didn't know what to say. Maybe I thought my parents couldn't understand me or were speaking a different language than me. Maybe I just thought the world couldn't understand me. And so a sigh was just my way of trying to get through to them or to try to express myself somehow or express my overwhelming emotions because I didn't know what else to do. Well, do you ever find yourself sighing? Even as adults, maybe even more as adults, we often feel the need to sigh. And there are a million reasons why. Some of them are happy. We sigh when something is completed that has been weighing us down. We sigh for a job well done. We sigh with contentment when things seem to be going well or when we realize our many blessings. Sometimes we sigh with uncontainable joy when we don't know how to express ourselves. And we sigh maybe when we're letting go of something, when all of the tension is just leaving our body in a simple breath. But other times, other times we have sighs that aren't so happy. Sighs of frustration when things aren't going right. Sighs of resignation when we feel like we don't have the power to change a situation we don't like. Sighs of anger when a person or situation makes us mad but we don't want to blow up. Sighs when we're overwhelmed, when we have too much to do and we don't know how to get it all done, or when the world just seems to be closing in on us and our cares and concerns feel like too much, or perhaps sighs of sadness when we're hurting too much to even have words for our pain. Sighs express a lot. They help us express what we're feeling when words just don't do the trick. Is it useless? My parents probably thought so when I was a teenager, and especially when combined with the oh-so-helpful eye rolls and slamming doors. But sighs, sighs can also be quite helpful, especially when you don't have a different way to express yourself, when you can't come up with the right things to say, or even figure out what you're feeling, when you don't know what else to do. We sigh. We sigh so that we can do something. And so it is in our life of faith. There are many things in our lives of faith that we can do something about. In our gospel lesson for today, we hear a lot about God's kingdom and ways we can build God's kingdom. And there's certainly ways we can do that here and now. There are certainly things we can do in this world each and every day. We can speak out for justice. We can help those in need. We can care for one another. We can lift others up. We can give to the poor. We can feed the hungry. We can share God's love. There are many things we can do each and every day in our lives of faith. But there are also, there are also days when we don't know what to do, or when we are powerless to fix something, or perhaps when we're just too overwhelmed or angry or sad about the state of our world or the state of our lives. I'm sure that's happening for a lot of us these days with so much we are carrying in our hearts. Pandemics 
poverty, racism, riots, violence, economic struggle, struggles. You turn on the TV and you see things about what murder hornets or locusts or the bubonic plague. The other night I had a dream that little tiny frogs had invaded our house. I think I was literally dreaming that God was sending plagues. Yes, this world is overwhelming. And there are many days when we are powerless, when we struggle, when we don't know what to do. So what do we do then? What do we do when we don't know what to do, when we are powerless or overwhelmed? Well, the obvious answer is just turn to God, right? Turn to God in prayer. Come to church trusting God. Because as our text from Romans tells us, all things work together for the good for good for those who love God, right? So if we just go to God with all of our needs, all of our wants, all of our problems, everything will be okay, right? We'll have no need to sigh. Seemed easy enough for Solomon in our first lesson for this day. When he was named king, he was too young. He was overwhelmed by all of the responsibility. He didn't know what to do. And so he turned to God and asked for wisdom to deal with all the things that would come. And not only did God grant him that wisdom, but because his prayer was so unselfish and faithful, God also gave him wealth and power and long life. Solomon did the right thing. When he was overwhelmed, he turned to God with exactly the right words, and God blessed him. But then we who live in the real world know it isn't always that easy, right? Sometimes we turn to God and our sighs still don't go away. Our frustrations don't go away. Our prayers don't feel like they did the trick. The powers, the problems of this world still overwhelm us. Or God doesn't offer quick fix solutions to our problems. Perhaps God's timeline is different than ours. Sometimes the forces working against God seem to dominate. Sometimes we fear that God doesn't even listen. And in those situations, the advice to just turn to God can just be more frustrating. Are we doing it wrong? Are we saying the wrong things? Is God not listening? Maybe, maybe if we were just as wise as Solomon, if we had that much wisdom, everything would just come together. Everything would just work. If we prayed the right way, had the right theology, if we had the right attitude in our prayers, or if we did it right all the time, in the right place, with the right posture, then God would hear our prayers, right? If we would come to church, if we would just add the right words, like in Jesus' name at the end of our prayers, if we would fold our hands the right way, if we wouldn't think distracting thoughts or ask for selfish things, then we could be sure God would hear and answer our prayers, right? Well, I don't know about you, but when I pray, sometimes I do get distracted. Sometimes I do pray for selfish things. And it's very rare that I pray exactly in the right posture with my hands folded exactly the right way and know I am saying, all the right words with the perfect theology. As Paul tells us today, we are weak and we don't know how to pray as we ought. And that can be really frustrating, especially when you really need to talk to God and you don't know how to do it or you don't think you're doing it the right way. For then, not only can we not fix the problems in this world, Maybe we don't even know how to pray about them. Ah, could everybody just sigh with me one time? Ah, well, you know what? That, that was a prayer. That sigh filled with frustration or sadness or anger or boredom or contentment or joy, whatever that sigh was, that sigh was a prayer. Maybe it was a thank you for my blessings, Jesus. 
Maybe it was a plea about a situation you're facing. Maybe it was just frustration about not knowing what to say. But your sighs, your sighs are prayers, and they are heard by God, even if you don't know what you are saying. Because Paul tells us that, yes, we do not know how to pray as we ought, but he goes on to say that the Spirit intercedes for us with sighs, with sighs too deep. For words. The truth is we don't have to be Solomon or a saint or a perfect theologian for God to hear our prayers and answer them. We don't even have to have words at all. For our sighs mean something. They mean a lot to God. They are indeed useful because the very Spirit of God that lives in us tells God exactly what we are trying to say with each and every sigh that we breathe. When Paul says that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, he means not just life, death, peril, and sword, but also our very own weakness, our own inability to pray, our own inability to come up with the right words. Because even when we are up, unable to come to God or to speak to God, God in Christ holds us close. We are not separated from God's love in any moment. God has a hold on us, and even our own weakness will not allow God to let go. So when you feel frustrated, when you don't know what to do, when you are overwhelmed by this world, by your life, by pandemics or racism or violence or riots or economic hardship or anything else going on around you, when you maybe don't even have words, sigh, breathe, and God promises to hear you, to answer you, and most of all, God promises you a love that will not let you go and will never leave you to sigh alone. When I was a teenager, I sighed because I maybe didn't think the world could understand me or hear me. I maybe thought my parents were speaking a different language than me. I sighed because I was frustrated. When you are frustrated, when you feel like no one can hear you, when you feel like maybe even God can't hear your words or you don't have the right words to say to him, just sigh, breathe and he will hear you. So right now, right now I want you to think about whatever your greatest prayer concern is, whether it is a joy or a blessing, a frustration or a hurt, whatever your prayer is this day, think about that. Put that in your mind. You don't have to have all the right words just put that situation in your mind and let us all sigh that prayer to God together. Let us pray. Ah. Amen.
confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. on me now open your mouth and speak the word that heals this broken ground and say say what you will as we are still as we breathe in the very breath of God no Spirit of God, here with us now, giving us life again. And breathe, breathe on us now, fill us with your love, send us with your power. now open your mouth and speak the word that heals this broken ground and say say what you will show us your will as we breathe in the very breath of God no
Friends, we can come with confidence to the throne of grace, knowing that God hears and accepts our prayers. Don't be concerned if you don't know how or what to pray, for God's Spirit is right here with us, praying in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs and our aching groans. For He knows us far better than we know ourselves. For our prayer response today, we will be using a sung response. The words are, The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. And it goes like this. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. Oh. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for your church, O God, that we would be a church that lives out your call to proclaim the gospel, to share the good news, and to love one another. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs to deep words to express all. We pray for your world, O God. Bring justice and love to this world in desperate need. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs to deep for words to express all. We pray for your creation, O God, that we work together to create a sustainable earth that benefits all who live now and all who will come after us. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs to deep for words to express all. Oh. We pray for all those who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit. We pray for all those hurting in the midst of the coronavirus, for all in our community hurting this day, including Don and Jeanette Preby and family at the death of Don's father, and for all those we name either silently or aloud. Seeds for us with sighs to deep for words to express all. We pray for those celebrating this day, for the signs of new life among us, and for the joys this world can bring. We give thanks for the birth of Charles Daniel, son of Lily Grant and Matt Freiberg, and for our many thanksgivings this day. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs to deep for words to express all. Lord, wherever you see our cries, wherever you see our needs, wherever you hear our sighs too deep for words, we pray for your presence for your love, for your healing, for your patience, and for your peace. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express all. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting that you would hear us, even when we don't know the words to pray. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. 
words to express, oh, the Spirit intercedes for us, the sighs to deep, for words to express, oh. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Neither death nor life nor rulers, nor angels, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. good you are good when there's nothing good in me you are love you are love on display for all to see you are light you are light when the darkness closes in you are hope you are hope you have covered all my sin peace when my fear is crippling you are true you are true even in my wandering you are joy you are joy the reason that i see you are life you are life and you death has lost its sting and oh i'm running to your arms i'm running of your love will always be enough nothing compares to your embrace light of the world forever rain. you are more you are more than my words will ever say you are lord you are lord all creation will proclaim you are here, you are here, in your presence I may know. You are God, you are God, of all else I'm letting go. sing no other name Jesus Jesus my heart will sing no other name Jesus Jesus my heart will sing no other name Jesus my heart will sing no other name Jesus Jesus and no oh, I'm running to your arms I'm running to your arms the riches of your love will always be enough nothing 
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.